So I'm Chuck Foley. I kind of oversee our product marketing efforts for our cloud business at NetApp and make it simple, cut the cost, cut the risk. That is amazingly consistent with what we've heard with increasing volume and, and consistency and density over the past couple of years from our customers and our partners who are becoming a really important part of our ecosystem. And so that drives conversations in NetApp about where do we want to put the velocity of our investments? And instead of going through a bunch of slides with you, I'm actually going to show you live the technology that we're investing in so you can see where we are today. We're not where we're going to be in five years, but we're in a really good place in our journey. I want you guys to see it, and, and I'd love to get some feedback from you on what you think about where we are. You will hear me refer to Cloud Manager. Cloud Manager is a SaaS-delivered global control plane for all things storage and data management, not just from NetApp but we're embracing the bigger hybrid multi-cloud picture. So we believe that you should be able to have a way to manage your data that is both secure, but also ubiquitous, that I can get at it anywhere, including a hotel room in Santa Clara, like we're in right now. So what if I went here and I said, okay, I want to go to cloudmanager.netapp.com. Now I happen to have credentials. And yes, I pre-signed in so that you guys didn't have to go through the multi-factor authentication process with me. But if I didn't, I would sign in with my credentials, I get MFA authorized, and I would see this. Now, what you see here is an actual environment. What do you notice? First, really intuitive, GUI driven, pretty simple, because what our customers are telling us is that they have teams that have to spread across all kinds of different environments, and they really don't have the time, effort, manpower, or money for, okay, you're the on-prem storage specialist, you're the on-prem backup specialist. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is resources in Google, AWS, and Microsoft, truly a multi-cloud environment, but we're dealing largely with hybrid multi-cloud. So different, different skill sets, different people. What if I wanted to add an on-premise instance to this environment so that I have a real picture of my overall environment? I don't even have to know a lot about it. I'm gonna put in an IP address here for one of the test environments. Hopefully I put in the, whoops, extra period. So what you see right there is idiot proof. I can't put in an incorrect environment. In seconds, I now have my on-prem NetApp data center server added to the same picture so that I can do things with it. That's, that's a good step towards simplicity. How about if I take it even further? Now, bear with me, guys. I'm working off a laptop with the trackpad, mouse, etc. So what if I were to take this guy here and drag him down there because I want to I create a hybrid multi-cloud use case. I want to back up my data from my on-prem to my Amazon S3 account. Oh, by the way, did I know that that's an S3 account? Not a NetApp account. It's other vendor storage that also can be accessed and leveraged and used here. So I say, I want to create this backup environment. What it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, I know you want to back it up to AWS. I'm going to go ahead and tag that because you dragged it to the AWS. I then enter anything specific that I want to put here. You, you don't see this. It can then say, all right, you've drag and drop, you want to back up this on-prem system to your cloud system. What, what do you want to use for backup policies? I can create my own, but here's the good thing. I have already existing policies from my company on an role-based access control. It could even get where I can't create any policy. I have to use one of the defined policies and tell me which ones I got to use. So I'm going to use the first one here just because it's simple. Select next. It's gonna say, which of the volumes do you wanna back up? It's got three volumes on that on-prem system. Hey, it is backup. We probably ought to back up all of it. Guess what? I'm done. I just enabled backup from an on-prem system to an Amazon S3 account, according to my company's policies. What did I not do? I didn't install backup software. I didn't spin up a, a backup server. I didn't have to install agents. And I did it across multiple environments. When I'm a guy that operates at a sixth grade reading level, I don't know a lot technically about these different environments. And now to even make sure I now have it where I can see graphically what relationships exist between my, my environments. Now, what if I wanted to get more complex? Some of you guys, when you start dealing with cloud stuff, you know that if you want to say, I want to go spin up a cloud environment because the DevOps team has told me that they need a cloud-based file server environment for dev test. And they need to be able to move data back and forth from production into dev test. And I'm thinking, I don't know about VMs. Is this 
I mean, Amazon calls them an M4X large. Azure calls it a, a DSV3. Do I want to use HDD, SDD, premium SDD of what size, ST1 or PC1? It can blow your mind if you really don't live in that world. So you know what? We're going to make it really simple with automation, integration, and AI and ML. First, I'm going to give my working environment a name, CFD14. It's already got my, my user ID in there. I'll put in my passwords. Yes, they match. Again, idiot proof. And it says, what services do you want to enable? Now, I'm, I actually have admin level because if I was a standard user level, it doesn't even have to show me those. It'll apply what services on a policy basis are needed. I'm going to turn these off for now simply because I want to show you how easy it is to turn them on later. But notice something, as I'm turning these services off, saying I don't want to turn on automatic backup and monitoring, it's capturing why. That's important to us. Our customers' experience and what's important to them is important to us. We're going to capture that to help us give a better product. And the customer can see which ones were turned off in their environment by who and why. So it says, okay, you chose Azure. You want to spin up a single instance in Azure. I can select an availability zone, a VNet, a subnet. Yes, that's the configuration environment that I want. I can use an existing resource group or generate a new one. I'm going to generate a new resource group, but choose an existing security group. Now I can choose which charging method. Again, I have admin rights. I can choose any charging method. I can have these present only the ones that are available. For this demo, I'm going to choose the freemium. Here's why. Up to 500 gig, unlimited feature set of ONTAP in the cloud, unlimited term. This isn't a term. It's not a demo or a trial. It's a real instance. But when we found dev test or even some Kubernetes environments where I just need a little bit of storage for a while, what's the average container lifespan? Sometimes as short as 10 seconds, 30 seconds. It's nice to be able to have an enterprise class storage that I can spin up, use, and go away. So I'm gonna use the, that one. Now, again, what I say before, a six or eight grading level, I don't know about different storage types and VM types. So it has built predefined sizes for me. Is this a POC and small workload using premium SSD? Or is this maybe a cost-effective DR using standard SSD in a smaller VM? I'm going to choose that one because that's what I articulated to you guys before. I do need to create a volume. So I'm going to call it volume one. Let's make it 300 gig. Choose my default policies. Yes, it has storage efficiencies turned on for compression, dedupe, and tiering. So I don't waste the company's money. It says, all right, are you sure this is what you want to do? I say, yep, that's what I want to do. I checked everything out. I hit OK. It will go set up that environment for me. I don't know how to set up. I don't know how, uh, know how to set up an Azure VM. Hang Azure managed disk of the right type. Create different aggregates and RAID groups and apply the protections and set it up with the right networking resources. That's all done under the covers for me using automation. Makes my life a lot easier. The other thing that it does, it means we can take a certain skill set in our customers that know high level concepts and they can apply this to all the different environments that they need to do. So what it's gonna do is that's gonna go and spin up those resources for me in Azure. I'm done, however. What did that take me, three minutes? Maybe four minutes and I was explaining. If I wasn't explaining, it was about two minutes. I had a conversation on Monday of this week with an SRE, a lead SRE for a FinTech company who said, yeah, takes about, a little more than a half a man hour. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes of a guy working at a keyboard to take all of the infrastructure options for the VMs and the storage, et cetera, and set it up in the cloud and make that all work. While that does that, I can say, what other services are available to me that I, that I want to take a look at? Because I, I want to shift from reduction in cost and risk for a minute and show you some other things. FinOps is a persona set in, in our customers' environments that are really putting a lot of pressure on the IT ops and the cloud ops people. They say, hey, don't waste stuff. What are you using and why? So we've created this concept of a digital wallet in Cloud Manager. The digital wallet shows you all of the entitlements you have, the data and data management resources, where they are, if they're being used or not. So for example, the Cloud Volumes on tap licenses that I, that I just spun one up in the cloud for free, so that doesn't need to be in the wallet because that's free. I can go into here and say, show me all of the licenses that I currently have that may or may not be being used. Now, understand we're on a demo system. There is some latency and delay. So you have that, but 
well, that would, that's going to go pull the systems and come back and show me the licenses that I have. I could also go over and say, if I wanted to support my SecOps people, maybe I want to go and say, I, I want to show my ransomware protection dashboard. And it will go and build a picture of where I am from a cyber threat standpoint in my enterprise. It'll show me which environments I have that maybe are unprotected or I have data that is exposed because I have exposed permissions, or maybe I have classified data in a public environment. You're seeing all things like that. It'll even go build a, a, build a set of pictures and it's actually pulling the environments so I'll have to show you about where, uh, where I have things like uh, users accessing data right now that's outside of a standard or a norm. So it's using uh, AI to, to look at autonomous generation of activity. So what we've done is we brought together live real-time on-premise resources, cloud-based resources from all the different clouds, the ability to provision infrastructure, the ability to have it serviced on a workload by workload basis, and even provide role-based access between FinOps, IT ops, and SecOps. I mean, the UI is cool, especially when I'm doing anything in the cloud for the first time, I do like to interact through the UI to take it for a spin, see what the options are, figure things out. But then the next time I want to do it, because I am a terrible typist, I make mistakes all the time. What I really want is to be able to automate that process. Mm -hmm. So what are the automation options that snap into Cloud Manager? So you can use Ansible playbooks, for example. There, there is a concept called application templates, where in Cloud Manager, you can create application templates that will automate these things. Like Dev, if DevOps wants something, it's infrastructure as code. We participate in that. But then Terraform and Ansible, also, if you're using those, mm -hmm. you, can, you can enable those through this process as well. Okay. Okay. Really helpful, for instance, in the Kubernetes environments where these things are coming and going really fast. And since we're a player in, in, in that world with uh, our Astro Trident CSI that has been out there for years, thousands of customers in the world using that to use ONTAP for persistent storage, the CBO instance, especially with the new freemium pricing tier, free up to 500 gig, that's a great fit for those kind of workloads.